Hi, I'm Marlisa Brown. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. I've been in practice for 20 years treating thousands and thousands and thousands of patients. One day I go to the doctor and guess what? My cholesterol's up and my blood sugar's up. So now I'm pre-diabetic. And incredibly enough, I woke up fat. I mean, imagine that. Well, all right, I didn't wake up fat, but okay, it's here. And just like so many millions and millions and millions of people, inactive lifestyle, you hurt your back, you're not able to do things the way you wanted to anymore, and then just all of a sudden, it doesn't seem like it's all of a sudden, but it is. Something's changing, and we're gonna change it now, because together, you and I, we're gonna defeat diabetes in your kitchen. So today, on Defeating Diabetes in Your Kitchen, we're going to go Italian. I can't tell you how many people love Italian food. It's very, very popular. And sometimes when somebody begins to watch their blood sugars, they're concerned that they can't have their Italian food anymore. So the first thing I'm going to start with is zucchini noodles and pesto. And I know you're thinking noodles, zucchini. No, these are zucchini noodles made out of zucchini. So here is my zucchini and I am going to cut it into noodles. Now you don't have to cut it into noodles. You can actually go and buy a spiralizer that will do it for you. But it's so easy, let me just show you. I have my vegetable peeler here and I'm just going to cut ribbons of zucchini. And you know, certain times of years, the zucchini's everywhere. Now if you don't have a vegetable peeler, you can take a knife and you can actually cut thin strips of zucchini with the knife, and it doesn't even matter if you get lumpy pieces or not, because it's all going to be together in the dish. One, two, three. So, we have these beautiful, beautiful zucchini noodles that we already did for you. And we have some very simple ingredients. Now, I make pesto in the summertime when I have lots of basil available, but you can buy it anywhere, and pesto is just a combination of different kinds of nuts with olive oil, cheese, and basil. And what we have here is just a simple saute pan, simple cover. So I'm gonna take two tablespoons of basil pesto and I'm gonna heat it in a skillet pan. And I'm using a measuring spoon because we are looking to lower your diabetes at risk or, or help you lower the diabetes that you have already. It's important to understand, a lot of people will go ahead and use olive oil like freely, freely, freely. It's still almost 140 calories a tablespoon. It's got some saturated fat in it, and although it's a healthier choice than using something like, let's say, butter, it's still something that you need to watch how much you're using. So we're just gonna heat that up in the pan until it gets nice and sizzling, and then what I'm gonna do is I just add my zucchini noodles to it. That's it, we just add our zucchini noodles. As you can hear, it's starting to crackle already. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. And I usually use either a wooden spoon or a heat safe spatula. Make sure it's heat safe or you'll melt your spatula, so we don't want you to melt it. So let me just give it a nice little mix. Okay, so it's just about right now. It's nice and hot, it's starting to crackle. I have two zucchini here that we've already made into noodles for you. So I'm just gonna throw my zucchini in. We're braising it up right in here. It's so simple to do. And I've made this dish many times and sometimes I alter um, different vegetables. I've used yellow zucchini in it and I've used green zucchini in it. Sometimes I've thrown like shredded carrots in and it's really a wonderful dish. And I'm just gonna cover it for a minute to let it steep a little and then I just wanna talk a little bit. Now what happens is sometimes if you don't cover something when you put it into a saute pan, a lot of times what happens is it dries out and then people go and pour more oil in and more oil in and more oil in and next thing you know you just added about 10,000 calories of oil to your, um, your healthy vegetable saute. By covering it, it's steaming in there. It's steaming and then when I uncover it, it will braise a little so you get a little bit of the brown but you'll get the steam to cook it. And then what I'll do is I'll either add some wine or some vegetable stock or even water to it if it starts to dry out a little instead of adding the oil. It happens all the time. It's like even when you're making a vegetable, like let's say somebody's going to do a sauteed garlic with broccoli or, or broccoli rub, they'll, they'll, they'll keep adding, they'll just put the uncooked vegetable with the oil and they'll add and they'll add and they'll add. 
You could use a microwave or a steamer, par cook the broccoli, the broccoli rob, the zucchini, add a little bit of oil. The oil is enough to get that brown going, and then add water to keep it so that it doesn't stick. So you don't hear it going, so I'm just gonna open it in a minute so you can see. You can see it's already cooking down, and it's starting to get a little bit dry, but not as dry as you would have had it if you had it uncovered. So I'm just giving it a couple of mixes, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of my white wine. Today I'm using white wine, but like I said, you could use chicken broth, you could use water, you could use vegetable broth if you want to make this a vegetarian dish. Um, everybody should have a few vegetarian dishes a week because it's healthy to get more fruits and vegetables in. I've seen thousands of people's food diaries and I can tell you right now that people that even love vegetables, they don't eat enough vegetables. And all the different colors are what to protect you. They're very good for your health. And so by using a vegetable dish a few times a week, you're helping elevate your antioxidant protection and you're protecting your body better. So sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. I just want to talk a little bit about the other ingredients. We have a small amount of um, Parmesan cheese. Now, a small amount of Parmesan cheese is great because it gives you a lot of flavor, but if you use a lot, you're going to be adding a lot of sodium to the dish. So if you're watching your sodium content too, be very careful about how much Parmesan cheese you add. Ditto for the salt. So this is, um, this is a half a teaspoon of salt that I'm adding. Now, I want you to know that a lot of times people will add salt when they're cooking and they'll keep adding it until they get the flavor they want. The food absorbs salt. So that what ends up happening at the end, you add more salt because the food absorbs it and you have like 10 times the salt you would have. If you add the salt at the very end, you get that burst of flavor. And that's why people sometimes go for sea salt because those chunky kind of salts actually cling to the food. It will give you the burst without all the salt. But if you're on a really low sodium diet, you can add some vinegar, you can add some lemon juice, you could add some lime juice. There's lots of things that will give you a little bit of taste of salt. So we're gonna take another look again. Now doesn't, oh, come on, now doesn't that look good? I mean, no offense, but I'm gonna get to eat it and um, you'll have to come to my house if we wanna do it together. So you can see the pesto, it's just coating. You can see the, oh, just tilt it up so you could just see there's some sizzling going on here. You can see the moisture being released from the zucchini. Um, you can make this al dente, you could make this soft. I like it a little bit softer, so I cook it a little bit longer. I've prepared this and left it covered on the stovetop ahead of time, and then just heated it up when all my other dishes are ready. So as we let that sizzle, um, I just want you to know that we're going, and look, see, we can rinse this bowl and we can make our salad later. I have some fresh basil here. Now, I don't know if you grow basil in the summer, but I grow basil. So now our zucchini should be done right now. Let's take, oh, doesn't that look beautiful? And it smells great too. I wish you were here with me so that we could share it together. So I'm just gonna turn it off the heat and give it a stir or two. And see, it just kind of braised a little bit on the bottom, which is wonderful. And I'm gonna just use a very, very small amount of Parmesan cheese on the top. But you know what, I'm not gonna add it now. Why am I not gonna add it now? Because if I added it now, then I would be adding more later, and then we're gonna be having too much fat and salt from the cheese. We're using it just to accent the flavor of the beautiful zucchini. So I'm gonna take my zucchini off of the stove, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to plate it up. And you know, any kind of plate will do. I like to serve, serve things family style, so I put it on one big plate so everybody could take it together. Um, some people like to do individual for each person, but you know, when you put it out on a beautiful plate like this, let me just show you. I'm gonna do some zucchini. And sometimes you can put a little bit of breadcrumbs on the top, but again, if the meal has other carbohydrates in it, like if you're gonna be breading a chicken cutlet or you're gonna have any pot, regular pasta, then you wouldn't wanna add the breadcrumbs because then you're gonna be upping the carbohydrates too much. So I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese across the top, isn't that beautiful? And wait, wait, wait for it. We're gonna put a beautiful few basil springs. Now, by the way, if you don't grow basil like I do, it's okay. You can get this at the supermarket. Oh, voila, delicious zucchini noodles with pesto sauce. And don't go anywhere because now we're gonna be doing our healthy, lighter version of chicken parm. For generations, our family has perfected authentic Mexican dishes from seasoned chicken and beef to carnitas, arroz, and barbacoa. The Cardenas family has always followed the traditions of their ancestors when it comes to cooking. From the beginning, they've created authentic Mexican dishes from scratch using recipes that have been passed down and perfected over generations. This tradition of gathering around a great meal with family and friends is what Terrio Foods strives to pass on. 
from our family to yours. So who doesn't like chicken cutlet parmesan? And yet still, who doesn't like breaded cutlets? Let me tell you something, when I look at patients' diaries, half the time they write, whenever they have fried chicken, they just write chicken. Whenever they have grilled chicken, they write grilled chicken. A lot of people are afraid of eating the foods that they love, especially when they have heart disease because you think breaded cutlets deep fried and you think breadcrumbs and you think diabetes. Well, the thing is about diabetes, it's okay to have some carbohydrates. We just need to incorporate it in the diet. So if we're gonna make chicken cutlet parm and we're gonna bread the cutlets, then we're not gonna serve that with regular spaghetti. We'll do that with our zucchini ribbons. If we want regular spaghetti, then we're gonna grill the cutlets and put some tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese on it. So we have a pseudo chicken cutlet parm that goes with um, regular spaghetti. So you need carbs, you just don't want too many and you want them at the right times. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna bread some cutlets. And I'm gonna do them in an oven in a way that it's not gonna get dry like the way a lot of people say. So normally people will use cooking spray when, they, when they're gonna do things lighter. I just want you to know that you just don't do this when you do the cooking spray. Because if you look at the bottom containers, most of the time it's a quarter of a second spray. 100% oil, so you wanna do it carefully. So what I normally for this recipe, you would use two thirds of a cup with four cutlets, you use two thirds of a cup of breadcrumbs, and then you would use like one egg white. I have a little bit more here so it's easier for you to see. I like a lot of garlic powder, so I'm gonna put a lot of garlic powder in and onion powder, which I have it mixed together. I'm gonna put some oregano and basil, and I'm gonna put just, 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 just a touch of Parmesan cheese. So just a touch, because again, it's fat, and salt, and calories. So I'm gonna mix it all up together. And I'm gonna show you a big trick that a lot of people don't know about. So these are our cutlets. Now there's two ways to get cutlets. You can buy the cutlets already thin sliced, which is easy and clean for you. If you buy tenderloins, you can put them on a piece of plastic wrap and put another piece of plastic wrap on the top and you can pound them, or you could actually um, split the chicken cutlets yourself. This is the easiest way to do it. So we take our cutlet and we're gonna just dip it in the egg whites and we're gonna dip it in the breadcrumbs and we're gonna put it on our pan that I sprayed too much cooking spray, like I told you. Be careful how much you spray. And sometimes it's okay to put like a drizzle of olive oil or something like that instead, because a drizzle is a drizzle, but make sure you drizzle it. Get one of those little containers that really drizzles, don't like glop it on the top. Now the trick that I'm gonna tell you about has to do with how you put it in the oven. First off, if you broil them, they cook much faster, so there's less chance of them drying out instead of, um, instead of um, frying them or um, frying them. We don't wanna fry have a fry instead of baking them. Now a lot of people, when they go to bake their cutlets, they put them in the oven on this pan just the way I did it, and they put it, whether it was broil or bake, they take them out of the oven and they'll tell you that the cutlets are like, um, you know, hockey pucks. They'll tell you it's like a hockey puck. I ate that, it was like a hockey puck. And the reason is, is they didn't put any oil on top of the cutlets. You need to put a tiny bit of vegetable oil on top of the cutlets to keep them from drying out. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spray and I'm going to just put like one, two, three on top of each cutlet and then we're going to have a cutlet that's not going to dry out, that's going to be moist and delicious. And by the way, people are not going to know that these aren't fried. I do this all the time and they'll say to me, oh, I'll know the difference, I'll know the difference. Nobody knows the difference. I'm just going to fill in over there. Okay, so quick spray on each one. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to pop these into the oven. We're gonna broil them on one side, flip them, broil them on the other, and then we'll be back to make up our chicken parm. Okay, so our chicken cutlets came out of the oven, and tell me that these don't look like they were fried. I mean, they look beautiful, they look delicious, you could eat them just as they are, cut them up, put them on a salad, do anything you want with them, we are making them parm. So we have tomato sauce, that we're gonna put some tomato sauce on the bottom of our casserole dish. This way you get like a nice little bed for our chicken cutlet. And you can make your own tomato sauce, you can buy tomato sauce. The important thing is, is that if you're watching your sodium intake as well, that you buy a lower sodium product. And I'm just gonna lay the chicken cutlets beautifully out in this casserole dish. And you can layer them on top of each other if you want, or you can make it in one layer. Layer, it's all up to you. Um, this one is like beautiful, like in the middle, so I'm finishing it off. So I'm gonna top it with a little bit of sauce, and again, you just need a little bit. I mean, it's not like you don't, you're not trying to make them swim in it. You don't want to like steam them in their sauce in the oven. You can spread it out just a bit. And then I'm going to take this is a very small amount of Parmesan cheese. But again, if you're watching your sodium, use less. This is lower fat, 
You can buy fat free or you could just use a tiny bit. The Culinary Institute of America, when I went up there and I was doing some studies, they actually said use the best tasting cheese and use a small amount and then you won't need as much because the flavor is what we're looking for. And I'm using a measuring spoon. I'm just going to use two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese and again, just to watch the sodium and extra fat. So I'm going to pop this chicken parm into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes until it's sizzling and then come back and we'll finish it off. Yes! The authentic recipes for all of our products are signature to La Morena. The chilies are literally hand-picked for each can. Everything is manufactured in Mexico and imported into the U.S. La Morena is best known for its quality and authentic flavor, giving our users a taste of home. Stock up on flavor with La Morena. chicken parm was out and I was sprinkling it with some chopped parsley and basil. Delicious. You could put hot red pepper if you like on the top of it. This recipe can also be done with shrimp parmesan, any kind of parmesan you like. Anything you want to do parmesan, this recipe works. And if you want to make this recipe without the parmesan and bread it, it works great to make oven fried flounder that looks like it's fried that's not fried. I also have done this with pork malonaise, which is a terrific appetizer. Thin pork cutlets breaded the same way, sliced in small pieces, put it out with toothpicks. They'll be gone in two seconds if you have anybody over your house. My husband comes walking by, they're not even going to make it out for the company. So this recipe can be done just grilled, broiled, or baked without any breadcrumbs on it so you could save those carbs for some pasta, some bread, or maybe dessert. So enjoy and coming up next the salad so don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Simonero with Taste This TV. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Cat's Gluten-Free Products. Now, Cat's Gluten-Free is not only gluten-free, but it's nut-free, dairy-free, and soy-free as well. So when you're looking for a healthy, alternative, gluten-free snack, Cat's has got you covered. From their powdered donuts all the way to their cherry pie, chocolate muffin, choose Cat's whenever you're choosing the dairy-free and gluten-free. That's enough for Taste This TV. For more information, log on to the website at the bottom of the screen and check out Cats. So we're back for our final dish, this beautiful Italian salad. You know, and it's interesting, in some places, like a lot of times in America, we always serve the salad first, but in some countries, to cleanse the palate, they serve the salad at the end. Um, I have some beautiful mescaline greens here that I just want to um, share with you. A lot of times people just go for the iceberg lettuce. And it's important not to do that because there's so many interesting different things that are out there that we could try. Loaded with nutrients, loaded with flavor. So I'm gonna go through some of the ingredients that we're gonna put in the salad here and I'm gonna tell you why we selected them. So chickpeas, which is a bean, which is loaded, loaded, loaded with fiber. And a matter of fact, it's a water-soluble fiber, which is very good for heart health. A lot of times you'll hear about eating oats and oat bran. Well, chickpeas are loaded with water-soluble fiber. So I'm just gonna throw it in my salad. Just to throw them in there. A lot of people never think of doing things like this. And then they always tell you to choose as many colors as you can in your diet. And onions have a lot of um, health benefits, but also I selected a red onion so that we can get the benefit of using a different color in your salad. And again, these are fine chops. You could do onion slices, you could do onion pieces, delicious. So we're gonna just toss that in our salad. And then olives. Olives are always, people are always talking about the health benefits of olives. Well, olives are better for you when they're used to, instead of another fat in your diet. Olive oil is a monounsaturated fat. And monounsaturated fats, when substituted for saturated fats, can lower your cholesterol while maintaining your good cholesterol. We don't want to use a lot, though, because there's a lot of calories and it is a lot of fat. But again, we're adding it to our salad. Moving forward, let's talk about some other colors that we're going to add. We decided to add some roasted peppers to your salad. Now, you could buy pre-roasted peppers, but you can make them really, really easily. And there's a lot less salt in them if you make them fresh. All you have to do is take a whole red pepper, yellow pepper, put it on a baking sheet covered with aluminum foil, give it a tiny drizzle of oil, and roast it until it turns black. Let it cool, cool down, peel it, seed it, and then you have beautiful, beautiful roasted peppers. And let me tell you something, there is nothing better than a homemade roasted pepper. Once you try it, you're never gonna go back. So we're gonna toss this in our salad too. Look at all these beautiful colors. I mean, it really is starting to get. By the way, I have these 
great tossing tool. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mix so that we get a, a nice thing going. I mean, just don't put just cucumbers and tomatoes in your salad. So I wanted to show you some beautiful artichoke hearts. You can buy them frozen. You can buy them marinated. If you get them marinated and you want to cut back a little bit on the fat and the salt, just drain them and give them a quick rinse. I'm going to toss these in our beautiful salad. And again, not just lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumber. And don't just go for the iceberg, which a lot of people do. I just want to talk a little bit about dressing before I go ahead and talk about some of these other things. A lot of times when people are on a heart-healthy diet, they'll go out and buy fat-free dressing. Fat-free dressing can be loaded with salt, almost 300 milligrams in two tablespoons in many brands. So if you're trying to watch your sodium, don't buy the fat-free dressing. Use a little bit of oil and a little bit of vinegar or a little bit of lemon and just season your salad yourself. A small amount of fat is okay. We just don't want to go overboard. There's many, many salad dressings available. If you decide to use salad dressing, use it sparingly. If you're a big glopper and you glop salad dressing on your salad, do me a favor. Season your salad a little bit first. A little garlic, a little onion powder, a tiny bit of balsamic vinegar, and then you'll be able to use less dressing. We don't need to gop it, gop on. So, and if we're gonna use salt, and here's some salt for the recipe, you just wanna use a dash. There's 2,000 milligrams of sodium in a teaspoon. We just want to use a dash. So I'm going to season the salad instead of putting dressing. So I'm going to put my dressing over here. I am going to give us a little bit of garlic and onion powder because I happen to like garlic a lot. So a little garlic and onion powder. Of course, I'm not going to go crazy because, you know, we're going to eat this after and everybody else has to still be friends. I have two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. I'm going to toss that in here. I have a little bit of fresh olive oil. Now, just interesting, when people go out and they buy olive oil, they buy virgin olive oil or first pressed olive oil or light olive oil. Light olive oil has the same calories as regular olive oil. The only reason it's light is it's not as green as the other one. So if you're gonna buy light, just know you're not buying it to save calories, you're buying it because it has less of a flavor. So if you want that flavor punch, use the darker olive oils. If you're gonna be cooking with oil, you're better off cooking with canola oil because canola oil has a higher smoking point. So just an FYI tip. So I'm just going to do a little bit of drizzle. This is two tablespoons of olive oil, which is about 300 calories. So again, if you're watching, don't eat this whole salad yourself. I'm going to do a little tiny bit of pepper. Fresh pepper would be nice. Um, so if you want to grind it up, it's perfectly okay. And on the salt, I am going to do, remember I said, I'm going to do a dash. Dash. So let's toss it together. So I got this beautiful, beautiful salad, all different kind of mixed mescaline greens. I have the fresh roasted pepper, which you know you're going to do yourself at home. We have artichoke hearts, which you're going to buy frozen if you're trying to buy low sodium or you're going to rinse the marinated ones. We have black olives, but in moderation because we don't want to go crazy. We seasoned the salad ourselves with some garlic and onion powder, a touch, and when I said a touch, you saw me touch. It was just a touch of salt, a little bit of pepper, and if you can grind it up yourself, it's even better. It's a beautiful, beautiful salad. And this is not, I didn't even put cherry tomatoes in, which I happen to love. But if you're going to put cherry tomatoes, let me just tell you something. Take some cherry tomatoes and put them in a casserole dish. Put a tiny bit of oil and a tiny bit of balsamic vinegar and roast them about 350 degrees, about 20 minutes. They're like kind of caramelized together. They get really, really sweet and rich. We'll throw those into our salad. Now we're not just talking cherry tomatoes. We're talking cherry tomatoes plus. So we have a beautiful, beautiful salad. We have our zucchini ribbons, which were just zucchini. Zucchini with pesto sauce. Now, if you want to make your own pesto sauce, give me a call. But if you don't want to give me a call, let me tell you, it's just basil, olive oil, nuts. You could use pine nuts. You could use walnuts, a little Parmesan cheese, a touch of salt, and you have your own pesto. I make my pesto. I freeze it in ice cube trays. I put those ice cubes of pesto in a Ziploc freezer bag. I put it in my freezer and it's good for the whole year. I have pesto whenever I want it. We have this beautiful zucchini noodles with pesto and Parmesan cheese. Again, just a little bit. And then, of course, we have our chicken cutlet Parmesan, which could have been trim Parmesan if you wanted it to be. We used low-fat mozzarella cheese. We used a small amount. We used tomato sauce. We made those chicken cutlets perfect without frying them. We did them under the broiler. You don't want to use those breadcrumbs, like I said before. We could go ahead and have a little bit of pasta and bread and just grill the chicken cutlets, a little tomato sauce, a little cheese. It is just as delicious. You know, I do that all the time with um, eggplant as well. And it's just the most wonderful thing.
round out our Italian meal. And you know what? If you want a little bit of dessert, we could have a little bit of sorbet or we could have a little drink of wine. I just want to talk about wine a little bit on cardiac health. The American Heart Association says it's okay to have a little bit of wine in our diet. The problem is, is people don't stop at the little. You know when you go to a restaurant, they don't give you enough wine? That's how much wine you're supposed to have. One drink about for a woman, two maybe for men. So if you don't drink already, I'm not suggesting that you start. But if you do include alcohol as part of your diet, keep it reasonable. Don't have a bottle. Have a small amount. One drink a day for a woman, two drinks a day for a man, max. Red wine has been touted for a little bit more of healthful properties for those antioxidant qualities. So a little bit of alcohol, a lot of healthy food. This is Marlisa Brown for Defeating Diabetes in Your Kitchen. And if you want any of the recipes, go to defeatingdiabetesinyourkitchen.com. Salute.